Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. Now, if you saw my most recent video right here, I cleaned up my entire soap studio. I cleaned up the filming room, I cleaned up the pantry, I cleaned up the office, and in doing so, I found quite a few little kits that I had stashed away that I haven't done. I have some kids kits, I have some really legit craft kits, I have PR people have sent me. One of the things that I have is this soap making kit from Brambleberry. It is the Pink Salt Soap Kit. Now, this is a substantial, cold process soap kit. So if you're watching this video being like, is this the cheapest soap kit that has ever been made? The answer is no. Because cold process soap requires a lot more ingredients, including sodium hydroxide. Whenever you buy kits that are cold process soap, you're going to be spending a little bit more money. It's not as easy as packing melt and pour. Those raw material goods cost more. So keep that in mind. Now you do get to make 12 different bars of soap with this kit. I will put the price breakdown on the sidebar here so that you can see what it costs per bar to manufacture. Please keep in mind this kit does not include soap making essentials like a stick blender, protective eyewear, any of the buckets or spatulas you're going to need. Those you're going to have to supply yourself. I do have links to the ones that I prefer to use including a stick blender that is under $50 and lots of items I like to get from the dollar store in my soap making little like kind of resource guide if you want to check that out and I will link some of those items down below. And a quick disclaimer, no matter what links I give you for things like pictures, you will always be able to get them cheaper at your local dollar store. Do not buy those online. Go ahead, make a trip to the dollar store, get those there. Make sure it either has a recycling code two or a recycling code five so that when you're working with sodium hydroxide, it doesn't melt the plastic. Now, all the disclaimers are out in the open. We can finally unbox this kit. We have our instructions that also have pictures to go with them, which is very, very helpful. We have our lots of lather quick mix oil blend. This is a pre-blended oil oil mixture that Brambleberry has. Very, very convenient for people who are trying out soap making. They don't want to have to mix out and measure all of these fancy oils. They have done it for you. What's this? Some extra coarse sea salt. Mmm. They look like pretty rocks. We have our container of sodium hydroxide. I will be mixing up sodium hydroxide on camera today. I will be changing my outfit and putting on all the proper PPE to do so, but I'm just letting you know we'll include that in today's video. This soap is fragranced with sea salt and lily. This is what the product image looks like on Brambleberry in case you want to go check out this fragrance oil. It smells really, really fantastic. Very much like a very luxury spa. Not like I would know. I've never been to one, but that's how I imagine a spa would smell like. <laughs> We have our silicone mold with six round guest bar size soap cavities. Ooh, some more pink sea salt. I have read through the life safety procedure and all of the instructions once over before beginning. I always recommend people do this just in case there are some time constraints you may be working with. It really, really isn't nice to start a kit and then realize you don't actually have enough time to complete it. So I'm going to go get dressed in some more uh, soapy attire and we will come back and mix up our light water solution. All right, I'm in my soapy attire, so it's time to add my PPE. Now I have my hair back in a bun. I'm going to wear a hairnet. Is this part of PPE? Not really. This is part of me not wanting my hair in the product that I plan to give to customers. There's nothing nastier than getting hair in one of your bath and body products. It's like the antithesis of clean. I have my gloves, I have my goggles, and if you want to be really, really safe, you can also use one of these. This is a full face shield. That is what we use whenever we are making large batches of soap here at Royalty Soaps. We put that over our goggles. So you have dual eye protection there. But for today, since I'm making it in my studio and I'm very comfortable and I'm very safe, I'm just gonna use the goggles. Goggles on before I even open up my sodium hydroxide and we're ready to begin. Okay, we're going to begin by adding in our distilled water. Now, normally I would mix my lye with ice because this significantly aids in keeping the temperature down. If you pour lye water straight into room temperature water, your solution is going to be scalding. It is going to have fumes, etc. If you use at least half ice with your lye water solution, it will significantly cut down on the fumes, but I am following directions today. So straight room temperature temp water it is. Now, in a separate container, I will be measuring out the sodium hydroxide. 
inside. I'm gonna unwrap it just like so. It has a safety top. Then I'm going to tear my scale and I'm going to measure my sodium hydroxide into my little cup. You always wanna make sure you are measuring your sodium hydroxide into a separate container than your water, just in case you over pour a little bit. And now very carefully, I will add my sodium hydroxide into my water. I am in a well ventilated area, of course, and I'm just going to stir slowly until it is fully dissolved. I am standing back a bit because, you know, fumes. And then I'm gonna keep stirring until all the particles have dissolved. You can tell pretty easily because you won't feel any grainy bits at the bottom of your container. All right, after everything has been stirred and I can see that the lye water is getting close to being clear, I'm gonna move this off to the side where it is in no danger of being knocked over. I'm gonna heat my quick mix up in the microwave for about 30 seconds as instructed. And while that warms up, I'm going to measure out my fragrance oil. You'll need a little less than one ounce per batch. I'll also go ahead and measure out my salt. My oil blend is completely melted. You can see by the clarity. And we'll go ahead and measure the proper amount into our container here. One thing I will say is that the instructions don't really include anything about temperature for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and take the temperature of both of these two items if I just follow the instructions all in a row. That would put our oils at about 130 degrees Fahrenheit and our lye water solution at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So I would definitely recommend recommend waiting a little bit before mixing these two things together. As tempting as it would be to just go ahead and say everything's melted, it's all right, oh come on, let's go. I don't think it's going to yield you the best results, especially because we're adding a floral fragrance. So I'm going to wait until both of these items are under 130 degrees. All right, both my lye water solution and my oils are officially under 130 degrees. So we can go ahead and mix this in. I'm going to pour very, very gently and then I'm going to put the container that my lye water solution was in, in a safe space so that I don't get any little bits of lye water on my table, clothing, etc. Then I'm going to blend to just past emulsion. And given that my lye water solution and my oils are still relatively warm, it took me about 15 seconds to reach trace, which is not bad at all. Now we're going to add in our fragrance oil, get all that in there. And then I'm going to incorporate this by hand unless it starts to rice, in which case I'll use a stick blender just to make sure that our soap stays fluid enough for me to pour it into our little mold over there. Wow, that fragrance oil is smelling up the whole room. Beautiful. Oh, oh, look at that, it looks like vanilla pudding. Now I'm going to add my salt, little bit of exfoliation. Make sure that it's good and incorporated, not just sinking down to the bottom. And now it is time to put into our mold. Oh, this is a very heavy duty silicone mold. If you've ever purchased one from Amazon, you may notice that the side walls are a bit flimsy and it gets damaged during shipping. That is not gonna happen with this mold because quite frankly, it is too thickums. I'm not filling these up all the way because because even though I tried really hard, the salt did kind of sink to the bottom and I wanna make sure that all of my bars contain a good amount of salt. So I'm alternating where I pour. Make sure I scrapey scrapey my containy, jiggle it around to make sure that I do get to the edge of each mold. Make sure there's no air bubbles. I don't think there are though. <laughs> and we can go ahead and add a couple salts to each bar just for pretty. I have enough to add, I believe about one to each bar and then two of the little ones. All right, go ahead and add that on the side. They're setting up at a great rate. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to let this sit for about 24 to 48 hours. Because the silicone mold is thick enough, I can pick it up with relative ease. So I'm going to put it in a place that's safe and out of the reach of anybody that may want to stick their fingers in it because they think it's a dessert. It has been a full 24 hours. And even though the instructions said to wait a two to three days, I can already see that 
the soap is pulling away from the edges of the silicone mold, so it's probably gonna be safe to unmold them at this point. Salt soaps do set up faster than other bars. Yeah, you can see it came out super, super clean. It smells really, really nice. This was a really easy kit to do. The fact that you can just use a quick mix and sodium hydroxide that they ship to you is really great. And I would say if you've never made cold process, but you don't want to compile your own things at first, you just want to try a fragrance and an oil blend and a recipe you know is going to work, I would definitely recommend this. And you get to make 12 bars and you get to keep this silicone mold. Now, I have tried other kits that have molds that they use for the kit that I don't think I would be interested in using in the future, but that's not the case with this. You could easily use it for melt and pour. It's just a good size all around, so I really love that feature. I will go rinse this out, and who knows, maybe I'll whip up that second batch today because it was really easy, and these bars look so good. Well, I'm truly impressed. Let me know if you want me to add these to the website for Black Friday. And if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Cold process soap is not your least expensive crafting option, okay? If the price is what's turning you away from this, just know that cold process soap making is kind of an expensive hobby to begin with when compared to something like polymer clay. Not saying you can't get bougie with the clay, but you know what I mean. The startup cost is almost never less than $100, even if you're getting things from the dollar store and you're getting the cheapest scale on the market, etc. If you go and watch my beginner soap making series, I kind of break down all of those prices. I try to get you guys oils and stuff you find at the grocery store. And again, I wasn't really able to do it for much less than 100. So having a kit that ships free for 70, where you can kind of supplement your own options. So I think the kit was a really good value for what you're getting. You already know that everything's going to work. You're already getting a really high quality fragrance and you're getting to use some sort of like luxury additions like big pieces of Himalaya sea salt. So I really liked that. Full disclosure, again, the kit was sent to me. I didn't pay for it. Brambleberry doesn't know that I'm doing this video and I'm under no obligation to make this video, but I do like to be a consumer advocate when I can. And I actually think that this one is worth the price and I just really think it'd be nice. I also think that these are gift worthy, which is not always the case when you do a craft kit. Sometimes your final product ends up being something you would feel comfortable using, but you wouldn't feel comfortable giving. Not so with this. It very much looks like a luxury bath and body product, which we love. If you want to see me do more soap making and bath and body kits, hit that like button. Let me know down in the comments below who else you think I should do a kit from. And companies, if you would like to send me a kit that you currently offer, well, you know where my email address is. Have an absolutely royal day today. Be sure you do something fun for yourself. Like, I don't know, uh, making some soap. You want to make some soap with me? Or maybe you want to make some like solid body lotion. You know, have you ever seen the solid body lotion? I have a video where we make that, but I don't really care what you do. <laughs> Just be sure you do something for you and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Meow.